Welcome back. So I've done team histories before, and this is very similarly put together, but it, it's just with everything that's going on with the Coyotes right now, I feel like we kind of need a refresher of how we got here. How did we get to a point where the NHL's like, we'll see, you know, this is as close as we've been to the NHL saying, might be time to pick up stakes and move. Now in 1996, when they went to Arizona, there was a simple plan get into the Phoenix market and and make this work. The problem was uh, they started out at America West Arena. The good news, they go 38, 37, and 7. They make the playoffs. They lost against Anaheim. The bad news, the sight lines are not good. Uh, the Phoenix Suns Arena was not made for hockey, so instead of being able to hold 18,000 people, instead the attendance was 16,000 because there were parts that overhung over the ice and parts where you couldn't see parts of the ice. It was, it was kind of a disaster. And that's what they were left with for a while. So they were sharing the building with the Suns. And I've seen people arguing, well, why can't they do that now? And the argument I would I would throw in there is, is probably a very similar situation. Uh, we saw very recently with Brooklyn housing the New York Islanders. That sight lines are not going to be the same for basketball as they are for hockey. And you, you don't necessarily have a building that can do both. There are buildings made for both. But... Still, uh, it can be a bit of a, a, a difficult situation for the team. Now, on-ice results, I'm not going to focus on as much, but they do, they have not made the playoffs a lot. Now, initially, the attendance was pretty good. They were actually in the top half in the NHL in attendance. Last in 2000-2001, it doesn't stay that way. But uh, they had, I, I think there were three different owners of the team, and then Richard Burke becomes the the sole owner when he buys out Stephen Gluckstern, uh, 98.99. So you have one owner now for the team. That doesn't last. 2001, the team is sold to developer Steve Ellman. This is also when Wayne Gretzky gets a share in the team. Gretzky's brought in. He would be the coach. And this really was, it feels like very similar to, I've, I've talked about the Atlanta Flames. And the Atlanta Flames brought in Phil Mir with the idea that that might bring in some casuals. And it didn't. And it felt like with Wayne Gretzky being hired as coach, I didn't think he was bad as coach. But it did kind of feel like on some level, it publicity stunts the wrong term. But it did feel like this was a way to get people to really notice. Be like, who's, who's coaching the team? Wayne Gretzky's coaching our team? Now, I thought Gretzky did okay with what he had. He didn't last that long as coach. But I thought he did all right as coach. Uh, but the, the off-ice stuff was still going to be a problem. So there was a plan to build uh, in the former uh, Los Arcos Mall in, in Scottsdale. Basically, there was a site in Scottsdale where the Los, Ar Los Ar Arcos Mall had been, and they were going to put a building there, but that fell through. Uh, they immediately got all kinds of, nope, not here, not doing it here, forget it. So they didn't do that. Now, in 0304, they start playing in what would become Gila River Arena. Uh, it was not initially called that. It was Glendale Arena. But it, the, the relationship with Glendale was an interesting one right out of the gate in that they had a 15-year a, a uh, contract that would eventually be thrown in uh, to try to create some semblance of stability, right? This was a team that had lost some money. Um, and by some money, I mean they hadn't turned a profit as of yet. Uh, this was something that came out uh, later on because in, in 2009, it became obvious the NHL was paying the bills for this team. And that's where when people talk about Bettman and his pet project, it really is the National Hockey League's pet project was to try to keep this team propped up and keep it alive in Arizona. So May of 2009, the new owner of the team, Jerry Moyes, who had bought into the team in 05, uh, he basically puts the team into bankruptcy right before the NHL could sell the team to Jerry Reinsdorf. So he did it hours before the plan was to try to get, get the team out from underneath them. Moyes planned to sell the team to Jim Balsley. Now, Balsley was the BlackBerry owner who wanted to put a team in Hamilton. His obsession was putting a team in Hamilton. And, I, you know, I talk a lot about Eddie Livingstone and how the NHL had this no Eddie Livingstone policy. Jim Balsley might be a relative because... There was definitely, any time he was around a team, whether it was Nashville, whether it was, in, in this case, with Arizona, whether it was Pittsburgh, he was persona non grata as far as the NHL is concerned because he wanted to move a team to Hamilton. That was his prime concern, moving a team to Hamilton. And obviously, fans up where I am in Canada 
look at that and go, well, yeah, move the team to Hamilton. They're losing a lot of money. What came out was they had lost $54.8 million in 2008 in a year. And that they had lost, you know, $40 million in some of the previous seasons. This team was just bleeding money right, left, and center. And that's before things kind of fell apart. Now, Moyes puts the team up for up. And he wanted to sell it to, to Balsley by putting it into bankruptcy. So the NHL strips him of his ownership authority. And that's what happens if you step out of line with other NHL owners and the National Hockey League in general. They can just say, all right, well, you, you don't have that authority now then. So Reinsdorf is, is a part of a bid to try to buy the team. But that fell apart May 7th of 2010. So the NHL wanted Jerry Reinsdorf. They wanted that money in there. One thing the NHL understood was, while this, this team was passing through different owners' hands, they needed an owner with really deep pockets. And Reinsdorf was seen as that guy who could maybe make this work. Now, back in 2013, the NHL kind of plays a game of chicken with the city of Glendale. They're like, you know, we need some kind of a lease. We need some kind of stability here. We need to know that we're going to stay here. And so basically it's like, hey, you know, it'd be a shame if we had to move. And there was consideration for, rumor had it, they might have even possibly gone to Seattle with a relocation uh, in the event that Glendale had uh, had said no. Now, whether or not that would have happened, we have no idea because there was a 15-year lease on July 2nd of 2013 that was put into place as a new ownership group takes over the team. So this new ownership group, RSE, takes over the, the, the team and for the 2014-2015 season, they became the Arizona Coyotes, uh, which made some sense. They didn't play in Phoenix anymore. You might as well make them the Arizona Coyotes, make it a statewide thing, right? Um, and then June 10th of 2015, um, this kind of falls apart after that first season as the Arizona Coyotes because Glendale City Council votes to terminate the 15-year deal to deal, or 15-year deal, and now we go year to year. Uh, in part because they had been told, hey, there's going to be this windfall of money coming back for the city, and there wasn't. The city got maybe, you know, two-thirds of the money that they were told that they would get. And this is something that happens, right? So in, in the most recent deal that fell through for that arena in Tempe, obviously there's going to be some costs here and there to taxpayers, but the the argument from the Coyotes was that the benefits would outweigh the risks and that there really wasn't a big risk there. Now that that arena proposal is gone, we'll never really know whether or not that would happen. There's always cost overruns. There's always situations that come up when you're when you're doing a massive project like that. There's no way to tell how much it would have actually cost, what it would have cost, who. The reality is now it's just it's it's gone, and we deal with what we have now. So November fourth of 2016, there was a new arena in Tempe that was announced. They were planning on getting that started for the 2019-2020 season. You will notice they do not have a new building for the 2019-2020 season as uh, Arizona State University pulled out of it. They pulled out of that negotiation. Uh, one thing that has not helped the Coyotes is, while I think, I, I really do believe this time around they were acting in good faith, and I, I do think they were trying their best to come up with a permanent solution to the Arizona Coyotes' problems. And and create a, a basically put a put an arena in a in a in a situation where it could it could make money and this franchise could succeed and it felt like that was the first time because remember America West does not work America West absolutely that that will not work as an NHL arena uh, Gila River it was too far out and it just it never drew and so what happens here is you end up with a situation where nhl fans from elsewhere will say well there aren't real fans there then when the reality is we don't know we haven't had a situation where the coyotes are really set up to succeed so now andrew barraway became the new owner in the 2017-2018 season he would sell a majority ownership stake to alex Marawello, who had the deep pockets that barraway didn't um and so this was the idea that now, July 29th of 2019, you have an owner in Arizona who's got those deep pockets. He's got some money. He's got some sway. Maybe this will be it, right? Maybe this will be the time that the Coyotes turn things around. Now, there were discussions of whether or not it was a really nasty environment to work in with the Arizona Coyotes and, and how they were to work with and work for. 
Now, throughout the, the process of the new building in Tempe, I didn't talk about that because it really doesn't have an impact on whether or not that building in Tempe should go forward or could go forward. If there's a toxic workplace here and there, that can happen. Um, I'm not discounting it at all, but for the purpose of putting up a new arena, I, I didn't think it was it was something that was a big deal. However, when you have these reports out there of, of an organization seemingly in turmoil and chaos, that absolutely will cause people to have some pause about investing with a team, about how they feel about you know dealing with that team on a day-to-day -day basis. It is going to have an effect. And then um, after 2019, 2020, where they had a decent season, 2018, 2019, not a bad year either. They were in the hunt for the playoffs until the very last couple of weeks there. Um, and again, it felt like there was some optimism. Then it came out that they were going to get locked out of their arena, which at the time seemed absolutely bonkers. How can you not pay your bills if you're, you know, billion, multi-billion dollar corporation? They weren't paying their bills. And so this led to some, some, further erosion of the relationship between uh, Marowello and the city of Glendale. Um, I do think that played a role in killing the, the Tempe agreement. I think that it made it easier for the no side to come out and say, well, see, look, they didn't pay their bills there. And uh, look at all the, look at all the promises they made Glendale and they didn't follow through on. And there's some truth to that. Um, but it just, it just makes it kind of a mess because now you've got a team that's not performing well on the ice. They've made the playoffs once since 2012, and that was because of the expanded playoffs. If not for the expanded playoffs, we don't even have a playoffs in 2020 for this team. We'd be talking about how they haven't made the playoffs since 2012. So this this is the situation. You don't have a decent building. You don't have um, a team that's winning on the ice either. You have ownership seemingly changing every other year. Now they seem to have that, that stabilizing ownership at least in place but now they still can't get the building right um, and the inter interesting thing is initially when the team was bought out of Winnipeg the plan was to move to Minneapolis St. Paul however they were unable to secure a lease so still the problem was a building and then of course the NHL would put the Minnesota Wild there instead so I mean we could have had the Minneapolis I mean would they have been the Wild if they'd gone there what would have happened if the Jets had moved to Minnesota? What would have, what would the name change have looked like then? At any rate, uh, they end up in Phoenix instead because Phoenix is a big market. Phoenix could work. We have no idea because they haven't had a building that's worked. They haven't had a situation that's worked. They've gone through numerous bad ownership situations. The NHL ran the team for a while. And, and I know people were mad about the NHL running the team, and I, I get it. I totally get it. But it also kind of just made the whole situation worse in that it was it was tough to envision this team being built up to be a Stanley Cup winner until they were you know in in a better situation financially and so that's where we're at now they won their division in 2011 2012 they went all the way to the conference final they lost against LA that's kind of the highlight for this franchise so again for for when I see people saying well there's no fans of this team well, it's tough because ticket prices are pretty high at Mullet Arena where they played this year, right? They're not a winning franchise. This is not a, a winning product. And they went back into a rebuild before coming out of their rebuild in 2021. They're like, yeah, so we're going to rebuild for a team that hadn't been in any kind of a contending position since maybe 2012 when they went to the conference final. So it, it makes it tough. It makes it tough to sell the team. You could right now sell the team on, you know, guys like Keller, maybe Vimelka, some of the young guys, but the future plan to become a contender is a little murky. Now, what's going to happen this summer is I, I think they're going to have a hard time signing guys. I think they're going to have a hard time convincing players to um, to stick around if there's no full-on game plan. Like if you're a kid and you're 26, 27, and to me, yeah, that's a kid. Uh, but if you're if you're a player and you're 26, 27, you're in your prime and you're looking for a six year deal, do you sign that with the Coyotes or do you say I'll I'll go to market and I'll I'll sign somewhere else? Right now, I would think the odds are you're probably looking to sign somewhere else. So the plan was in place this year to go through, you know, the Mullet Arena experience as it is, try to have fun with it, try to do whatever you can to to spruce it up. Um, while there were players who weren't happy, definitely fans that weren't happy. But it was selling fans on this idea that, okay, 
this is the beginning. We're going to get the new building in Tempe, and then we're going to be a winner. And that was the plan. 2026, the new building opens up. You build a contender then. You go to the playoffs that first year in the new building. And hurrah, huzzah, the team is saved, and everything is great. And oh yeah, we turned a profit. The NHL, at some point, would look to pull the plug, and I think we're getting close to that. And I know people think, well, that's that's overdue by 15, 20 years. Fine. But it's it's the National Hockey League, and if they want to do this, then they want to do this. Um, I, I know I, I worked at a store that had, apparently hadn't turned a profit in years either, and I, I said, why haven't they closed it? The answer I got back was, I don't know, but it hadn't turned a profit in years. But it's propped up because there's other businesses that make the money. It's a chain, so it doesn't matter. And on some level, the National Hockey League seems to treat the Coyotes like that too. Like, well, everybody else making the money, so we want that Phoenix market. We want that Arizona market. We we, we know that Arizona can support it. And that's that's what the NHL is, has really doubled down on. But it really hasn't worked out. So the the future is going to be interesting because I don't think there's another team I could put on the board and have all of these ownership changes, all of these controversies, and all of these buildings that fell through, and then the rumored moves, whether it's, you know, uh, 2009 when, you know, can you move it to Hamilton, and then 2013 when the NHL's like, I guess we could move it to Seattle. So it's it's been out there, and we'll see what happens. Uh, I, I do think that we'll see... One, one thing that would probably telegraph it for us would be if Alex Marowello announces his intention of selling his, his ownership stake in the team. In the event that that would happen, that to me would signal the team would be gone out of Arizona. Um, he doesn't, I don't think he has any interest in owning the team if it's not going to be in Arizona. But that's where we're at. We'll see what happens. Of course, Andrew Barraway, who is still a minority owner of the team, um, due to criminal charges against him, he was frozen out as owner... Uh, what a couple months ago and just it just felt like it was just another scandal on top of scandals on top of scandals and I'm I'm sure that didn't help the yes side for the Tempe district either so that's where we're at let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always how far can this go uh, there we know they're playing in Mullet Arena next season where do they go beyond that because at some point in time the NHL is going to have to say well I guess that's that even though they've never really had a good building. It sounds weird, doesn't it? From 96 until now, they haven't had a building that could make them money. It just hasn't been there. And their contentious relationship with Glendale is the reason why I haven't talked about, could they return to Glendale? I'm going to say no. Uh, the relationship between them and that city hurt. And again, that's probably part of the reason why Tempe fell through. But let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.